<laughs> All righty. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another session. And I'm excited to chat with James McCarthy. And James is uh, with a company called Cradle. Um, and uh, James, share with us what it is that you're going to talk about. Hey, thanks, Natalie. Great to be here today. Hey, team. Uh, thanks for joining us as we talk about communication. Uh, it, it can be a bit of a boring topic, uh, especially if you're in the phone system world and you start hearing words like PBX and SIP and VoIP. Uh, it can send you to sleep for sure. Um, but what... Now, I'm just going to start my presentation here so you, can, so you don't have to look at me anymore. Um, but... What we're really here to do is to dig into how you can power up your HubSpot world by considering the most high value form of communication, which is, in our view, a real conversation. So, who am I? Tena Koto Katoa, which is um, te reo Māori for a welcome and thanks for coming. Uh, so, who, who is this clown that you're staring at right now, you might ask? I'm the founder of Cradle, as Natalie's pointed out, and we're a Kiwi company. Kiwi as in New Zealand, not the fruit, uh, but we have customers all over the world. So this should definitely be relevant to you. This is definitely not a sales pitch. I'm just going to talk to you about some of the things that we talk to our prospects and customers about in order to get you thinking about how calling should fit into HubSpot and your business's toolkit. Basically, what we're here to do is to help you have more human conversations with your customers. As a perk for good behavior or lots of interaction, we're giving someone who pays enough attention and knows some 90s cultural references from outside the US, failing that, someone lucky, uh, one of these bad boys, a brand new Jabra Evolve 65 that you can get as much work done on as this lovely lady undoubtedly does. Um, they released this in the middle of COVID last year and they're a fantastic headset, especially if you've got noisy colleagues that you don't want to have to listen to. Uh, a quick agenda run through. Um, so, you know, just in case you've wound up in the wrong room and you need a tinkle. Um, firstly, what is HubSpot and what is it not? Uh, a quick refresh refresher in case any of you haven't had your daily dose of Kool Aid yet. Uh, and then, uh, what's a phone call worth to your business? Does it add value or just cost you money? If you don't know that it's happening, is it still a value to you? Do you really value your phone calls? Uh, and then finally, what does it look like when your single source of truth has the whole truth in it, not the kind of Swiss cheese model of truth? I'll show you and talk you through some examples of what you can learn when all of your calls are always in HubSpot. Uh, and now it's a bit of a game of two halves. I'd love uh, to leave some time at the end for questions and hope that uh, we get plenty of interaction. Um, so shoot anything that comes to mind uh, through in the chat uh, and we'll discuss it in, at the end. Um, I do want this to be as interactive as possible. Let's solve something for you guys instead of just listening to me uh, rattle on. Hopefully, all of this leaves you to go away and think about what HubSpot could be doing better uh, and how something from the ecosystem can help you achieve that. So, quick run through of HubSpot. We all, we all love it. It's great. Um, they do marketing really well. Market has become a data-driven business. It's not just long lunches, glossy magazines, uh, you know, big events, bigger budgets. Uh, but it's sort of where this data and empathy come together to help you understand your prospect's world uh, and then help them see the value in what it is that you do. Uh, it's kind of helps what's bread and butter. They do it well. Um, so I'll probably leave that for now. A CRM customer relationship management tool, is something that you should be able to rely upon to accumulate, house, and serve up all of the relevant information on a prospect or a customer. This includes clicks on your websites, emails, notes, quotes, deals, and everything in between, right? Uh, and then what you should be able to do is take this information and layer the sales enablement tools of a tool like HubSpot over the top of those, uh, the data that you're collecting so that your processes can improve so that you grow more, grow faster, and you can do those things with fewer resources. Um, Service Hubs there has some cool features, lacks a few things. Uh, again, the ecosystem can be great to plug a few of those gaps. I think for us, what makes HubSpot so great, and we're HubSpot users ourselves, and we have a lot of customers that are HubSpot users. So we talk to many, many people using HubSpot, uh, many of whom have drunk the Kool-Aid, as it were. And what they do best is that it is such a usable tool and people love to use it. It's so much easier to use than Salesforce. So it's one that sort of software holy grail of simplicity. So to get into submissions today, 
uh, and to start digging into the value of a phone call for you, uh, I want to ask you a few questions. Um, feel free, chuck your answers into the chat or grab a pencil and write them down, throw them on the whiteboard, do whatever works for you. But I want you to start thinking about how you interact with your customers as a business. What works really well about what you're doing? Just think about that for a second. How do you know that it's working? And how do you think that you could improve upon that? What do you notice about the things that are working? Are there any themes? Is everything working? And then with things that are working, why are they working so well? How do you know that they're working well for you? What I'm trying to do here is, you know, babies in bathwater, is recognize that generally, if you're running a successful business, you're probably doing a lot of things really well. If you're adding something new, before you do anything, you want to make sure that you're not going to break what you've already got. Now that we know what is working well for you, I want you to start thinking about the different channels that you use to communicate with your customers. Hopefully this is easy, uh, and they're all identifiable in HubSpot on every context timeline. I want you to think about one of these three examples of communication that I'm about to give you um, that you might you know, hypothetically have with your customers, and then think through how someone in your team would go about having this conversation. So the first one, your customer hasn't paid you. Their bill is overdue by 30 days, and you're getting pissed off. What do you do? Pick up the phone? Do you send them an email, grumpy email? Do you cut them off? The second one is from the other side. The customer's frustrated with you. The product isn't working the way that they expect it to be. They've tried getting hold of you. They've got a, an open support ticket, which isn't satisfying them. What happens next? The third scenario that I've got is that you've got a big deal. Um, you're really trying to have to close this. Your action commitment with the, the prospect was to meet last week, but they missed that meeting. They're really busy or something's come up. And finally, they return your call. What, what happens? Who answers? What I'm trying to do is to get your attention aimed at whether you're using the right tools for the types of communication that you're about to embark on. All of these are what we, we internally would refer to as critical communications. I used to fear some of these as a business owner myself, especially collecting debt, and that's not a fun thing to be running around trying to do. Um, but if you flip it around uh, and start thinking about that conversation as being with another human, you get the opportunity to show a bit of empathy, to get curious about how their world is failing them right at that moment, or what opportunity they see if it's from a more sales-oriented perspective. Uh, and then you've got a much better platform on which to arrive at an optical outcome than just firing them another email, sending them another chat message, or making them another support ticket. Unless you can meet them, and let's face it, COVID's kind of put paid to a lot of that for much of the world, um, a phone conversation is often the best way that you can get in touch with your customers. If I were to ask you how many conversations like these your team have, how would you find out? What are the ramifications to your business of screwing these things up? And conversely, what happens when you get them right? What's the threat? What's the opportunity, right? What our customers have told us is that they're often unaware of even how many calls they receive, how many calls they make, and how much time they spend on the phone. They're tracking their emails, they're tracking email opens and clicks, they're measuring activity on their website. Um, they can see all of that information about a customer, but when they interact with the highest value interaction that they can probably do, which is a phone call, that goes completely unnoticed by this single source of truth that they supposedly have on their customer base. And, you know, as they say, you can only manage what you measure. How do you know in your business that your team are communicating with your customers and your prospects the right way? In other words, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody is around to hear it, does it make a sound?
Now imagine if a phone call was the first choice when it came to these non-functional, critical types of communication. What could that do for your business? Imagine that you could measure that. You could measure the impact that each of those phone calls was having on your business. Imagine if you could pull a report from HubSpot that listed the time spent servicing a customer, their average monthly spend, their lifetime value, and then you could decide whether or not you were spending your time on the correct customers or if you needed a different approach for some of your customers. If you make better decisions, I'll show you a quick example of a, of a report here. Um, it's just one from one of our customers. All the data has been ripped off it, but it's how much time do we service our customers and how much are they worth to us, to us over the long term? The basic question that the customer asks us is, hey, look, you know, which customers are we spending time servicing and are we over-servicing some of them by phone because it's expensive? And then if we are, why are we doing it? Once you have all of it in one place, you're really empowered to go and uh, ask these questions and find answers that help you improve. So what we do is we work with our customers to hopefully solve real problems and help businesses like yours improve the way that you business to be better at what you do whilst also being more human. Phone calls can be expensive, they can be difficult, they can require training and they require you to have an on-demand team. And if you do them incorrectly, they're disastrous. You can completely cock something up over the phone. Hopefully, you're getting a little bit curious about what bringing the phone deeply into HubSpot uh, can do for your business. What are some of the things that we can do with phones inside HubSpot? So I've given you an example of a report and there have been other people today talking about all sorts of integrations. Uh, but some of our customers, for example, send out a CSAT survey after a, after a phone call that exceeds a certain duration to see whether ex customers are happy with the response that they're getting um, during phone calls. Um, we've already heard from GoArrive about automations on the back of phone calls. And of course, that's something that's becoming uh, incredibly valuable. If you get a voicemail, imagine ordering a, a calendar link by text to that customer so that they can book a time on your calendar instead or on their contact owner's calendar instead of having to wait for someone to re respond to their voicemail. Uh, a quick summary. I'm trying to catch up some of Natalie's time here. Uh, we've gone through a quick overview of what HubSpot is and what it does. We've all drank that Kool-Aid. Um, we know there are gaps, um, but Scott Brinker and the ecosystem team do a fantastic job of helping companies like us fill some of those gaps. Um, we've read through a few questions and um, just trying to get you thinking about what calling does for your business. And what I'd encourage you to do is to think about what value you place on a call, whether you should have more transparency over the calls that do and don't happen. Just a quick disclaimer, not every business is fit for calling. Sometimes it's just not the right solution. Um, we dug a little bit into how you're communicating now and ask some questions that should guide you towards understanding if you're using the right channel. Does your company have a communication policy? Uh, we have one that basically says, don't be a dick. And if it's critical, have a conversation. Don't send a text or a chat. Uh, nothing that's that's difficult and complex should ever be said over email as far as company is concerned. Uh, and then, you know, what's next for you? If you see opportunities to help your team have better, more human conversations that help your business grow, perhaps you can consider how calling should fit into your HubSpot stack. Now, uh, questions. Does anybody have any, any questions that they would like to ask? Uh, I'm going to rattle... Natalie, I'm not sure if you can reappear here and help me with this. <laughs> I absolutely can. So we have one question. How do you recommend to manage different times so that you don't call diff, you know, during the night? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So you can have a sort of a follow the sun um, methodology and you can do that in, in various ways. If you've got teams based around the world, uh, then you can just use the availability of different teams and make sure that calls are only ever going to people who are currently available. And that way people aren't getting woken up in the night. Um, I, I think one of the, the key things that I would always stress when talking to a customer is to make sure you're setting the correct expectation with your customers. If you're setting the expectation that you've got 24-7 service, then you need to be able to support that with people in different time zones. Uh, and like 
our solution, for example, has the ability to handle multiple time zones and you can have different risks based on time zone. You could also have different numbers in different markets that had different sets of call rules um, outside normal business hours so that it goes local during hours and after hours it heads off to one of your other teams in a different part of the world. Cool. We have another one from Eric. So I'm using HubSpot to call and track. All right. I see there is some potential user. What does Cradle do to enhance this? Cool. So HubSpot, HubSpot's calling is a, it's a really good tool from an outbound perspective. And it's, it's great for salespeople who are knocking out call after call after call. And they're really pushing some of that stuff with their enterprise um, intelli you know, conversation intelligence stuff that's coming out at the moment. It's only happening in one direction, though. So if you call someone and they call back, suddenly that call disappears from HubSpot. It, um, you, the person answering the call doesn't know that it's a HubSpot lead. You don't have necessarily a log of that call going into HubSpot, so you don't know that they've called back. Uh, whereas with us, for example, we'll route any inbound call to the contact owner. So if you've got a deal and the contacts associated with that deal are owned by the deal owner, we'll try and get the account manager, the salesperson dealing with that deal on the phone before we send it to anyone else, which gives the account a much, much better experience uh, and still keeps that source of truth up to date by logging all of those calls against the correct records. Very good. If there are any other questions, feel free to drop them here in the chat. We only have one minute left. Any loud and words from you, James? Uh, no, I think that's all. Did anyone pick up what the um, the terribly cheesy thing from the nineties was? Um, I don't think so. Okay, so look, um, I don't think anyone on the call is British or from the Commonwealth. Um, Eric is asking, "What was the clue again?" Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Players right. That's a good guess, actually. So there were two of them. One of them is very New Zealand specific. It was a game of two halves, which is a TV show in New Zealand in the 90s. Um, none of you would have known that unless you're from New Zealand. Uh, but the second one was actually the agenda at the top, what's on the board, Miss Ford. And I'll, um, I'll show you this terrible thing here. Um, <laughs> And now I'm not sure whether that actually even um, comes through to you. There was no but, sound there. Oh, that's a shame. Uh, it was it was a um, a TV show in the 90s that, that they used to say that all the time. Anyway, nobody got that. Um, so Natalie, I'm going to let you choose someone who's been here to uh, and maybe if they can get in touch with you, and um, we'll, we'll get that sent off to them. <laughs> I think Eric has been uh, exceptionally active, so I think if no one objects, and I, I see that everyone is going to be, no, I object, I object, I think Eric deserves this. So Eric, uh, feel free to reach out to uh, James, and you have his email address right there uh, on the slides, and then you would get a, a headset. Yeah, awesome. Well done, Eric. Thank you very much for, for participating. <laughs> Just put me an email, and I'll get that across to you. This was awesome. James, thank you so much. It was really nice to see you. Uh, pleasure to connect, and I look forward to chatting with you again. Everyone, look forward to seeing you in the next session. Thanks, Natalie. Goodbye.